Chris Lee and Blake Lovell of Southeastern 14 presented by Stakes. We are previewing Alabama's basketball game with Gonzaga. That one to be played in Birmingham, not Tuscaloosa, but still that'll be a very partisan Crimson Tide crowd. Blake, Alabama comes off a nice win over Memphis, even though Namari Burnett is out for a while. Alabama is young, uh, but it played a really nice game against a I think a very good Memphis team and, and came out ahead and, and now gets prepared for a Gonzaga team that is probably a step to a half step behind what it has been in recent years, but still good. Yeah. I, I don't want to discount Gonzaga at all because I th still think they're, they're pretty good. They're just not, you know, they're not as dominant as we're used to seeing some of those teams in recent years. They're, they're not, you know, just going out and just beating everybody, um, you know, unmercifully uh, they're, you know, they're, they're a team that's lost some games. I mean, again, we're not used to seeing them have three losses to this point in the season. Um, you know, they lost to Texas, Purdue, and and Baylor. And, um, you know, a couple of those games weren't really that close. And so I think you kind of, you know, <clears throat> look at this Gonzaga team and, um, you know, still a very good offensive team. I think, you know, on the defensive side, maybe haven't been as good yet at, at times, maybe, again, that we're used to seeing. But I think you know, the level of competition matters too. And they played some teams that can put up some points. Uh, and then on the flip side, Alabama, yeah, they're coming off a, a nice win against Memphis, which we talked about. I thought that game would be close. I think Memphis is just a, I think Memphis is better than the numbers suggest. Um, yeah. And I think we'll see that play out throughout the season, but we're still talking about an Alabama team that's beating Houston, beating Carolina, beating Michigan state. Um, and yeah, just, just looks like the, the, the total package um, to this point. So, yeah, it sets up to be a, an interesting, you know, matchup here, rematch from last season where, you know, we remember um, Alabama went out there and put up 91 points and beat the Zags um, last year. And so uh, perhaps a little revenge on the mind for Mark Few's team. Let's hit the Alabama side of things first. Alabama's four leading scores of those three are freshmen. The other one is transfer Mark Sears. That just in terms of total points. Brandon Miller is emerging as a, I don't know, a, a, an SEC player of the year type guy, which I think is no shock if you paid attention to preseason. Alabama is getting really a lot of this done without Burnett the other night. And Javon Quinterly, he's not really rounded into Javon Quinterly form yet. He's got an effective field goal percentage of 34%. He's shooting 64% from the field. But what Alabama has is so much length and athleticism, and they just kill you on the offensive boards. It's not a great shooting team, but all those chances that Alabama manufactures through offensive rebounds, um, they're just a handful right now, and they're not even playing, I think, to their potential. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's – you know, it's not that surprising, I think, in terms of – we knew the freshmen were going to play a – a big role. And like we said, I mean, Quinterly is kind of, you know, I, I don't, you know, I, I don't know that his role is going to be necessarily maybe what people thought it would be. And I don't think that's necessarily a, you know, a knock on him by any means. I think it's just, I think you're seeing that some of the best rotations and lineups offensively at times are coming with a lot of these, you know, th these freshmen who can certainly do some things very well. And we've seen that to this point. And yeah, I don't think, I mean, Brandon Miller's, he's an sec player of the year candidate. I think he's a, a top five player in the country, perhaps, um, you know, in terms of the upside, I don't think yeah. there's a whole lot of doubt about that. And I think anytime you have someone on the floor like that, it just makes things a whole lot easier for you. And um, yeah, I mean, the offensive rebounding, what, what has helped Alabama is just having those second chance opportunities. And, you know, it's still a team that's going to shoot some threes. We know that just in terms of, you know, how, how many they're going to put up because, I mean, you know, they're still going to probably shoot 25 plus threes. Um, you know, there've been some games where they put up what 40, um, 35 plus. So yeah, I mean, Alabama's not changed all that much in terms of just what you expect from them offensively. Now, one of the issues is they're just turning the ball over a lot. And yeah. I think that's, you know, that's something that will, will be something you circle. I think as the season goes along, um, just based on, you know, how they play, but you know, this is also a Gonzaga team. I think that's not really going to turn you over a ton. So, you know, that's something where, you know, I think it could be, 
a little to, to Alabama's advantage there because I think, you know, you're playing a team like Memphis and, you know, it's a lot harder, I think, just in terms of how they play defense. Bama turned it over 19 times in that game. Um, you know, you look back at the, I don't know how many times it turned over against Houston, but I mean, it's like 15, I think. So, you know, that's something too, where I think Alabama will be able to do some things in this game, just based on the fact that, you know, this is a little bit kind of a different defensive setup you're facing here. Not to say that Gonzaga can't defend because they can, but uh, it's just in terms of, I think, uh, you know, the, the aggressiveness and the different styles you're going to see. Um, I think offensively, at least to me, I think Alabama, should be sitting in, in decent shape here. I want to talk to you about handling Drew Timmy if you're Alabama and then what you do with him if you're Gonzaga. But first, quickly, a shout-out to our presenting sponsor, Stakes. Predict sports better than the crowd for a chance to win NFTs. With Stakes, players can submit their sports predictions against friends, other fans, and influencers forever. Don't let your sports genius go overlooked. Join Stakes and have the best predictions captured in the moment. Head to playwithstakes.com forward slash 14 He's your invite code Southeastern14 for a double welcome bonus. Okay, Drew Timmy, regarded by many as the best returning player in America. He's been at Gonzaga forever. He's experienced. Um, and he does he does so many things for them. Um, what do you think? Obviously, he's going to be a matchup threat anywhere, anytime against anybody. How do you think Alabama handles him? And what other areas do you think Gonzaga can use to maybe get at where Alabama might have some vulnerabilities? Well, I mean, that's a good question because I, I think right now we haven't seen a lot of that on Alabama's side because we've said the difference has been they're just a completely different defensive team than they were a season ago, and um, they're, they're just defending a lot better. And I think that you know, I think that length and athleticism with this group and just the overall depth, you got a lot of options to turn to. I think that's helped. Um, of course, this is not Timmy related, but I think this is a game where, look, I mean, Amari Burnett was, I thought, easily one of their best defenders. And of course, he's he's out for a while. And so they're not going to have him in this game. You know, does that, I mean, I think it always makes a difference when you don't have a guy like that because, I mean, look at Memphis, right? Like, I'm not saying Kendrick Davis doesn't score 30 points because he's still good enough to do it, even if you've got a Burnett out well, there. Well, they had to put Bradley on him instead of Burnett. <laughs> well, and I think that's the thing is like, you know, in this game, I don't think Burnett was going to be guarding Timmy or anything, but I think you you look at that though in terms of how the matchups kind of settle a little bit, and and you wonder kind of you know is this one of those games where you see some of that without Burnett, um, and you kind of see different you know just how you do your your defensive rotations and such. So I think that's something to look at. But I mean with Timmy, I mean the thing is is right. I mean if you look at what they're doing, I mean you've got someone averaging about twenty one points a game. And, you know, beyond that, you've obviously seen the other guys, you know, Strother, Bolton, um, you know, Hickman, all those guys like they, they can score. And I don't think there's a lot of doubt about that. But, mm -mm. you know, it's it's kind of a it's kind of how it's how you choose to to play it. I mean, you just kind of know that Drew Timmy's going to get his points like he's going to he's going to get his opportunities because they're going to give him shots. Right. I mean, I'm looking at the games here. I think there's only what two games this season. You know, he's had less than double digit shot attempts. I think usually averaging around that, I don't know, maybe 13, 14 range, something like that. Maybe a, a, an extra one in there if he takes a three or so. But he's getting to the free throw line, you know, quite a bit, especially these last several games. He shot at least nine free throws in the last three games. Uh, but, you know, again, different competition too. But if you look at some of those games, they've lost, right? Um, look at the game against Baylor, you know. I think he fouled out in that game. He had, he only took six shots, only got to the free throw line four times, only had nine points. You know, they lose that game to Baylor by one. Um, you know, I think those are kind of things you look at in terms of, it's just kind of, I think for Alabama, it's again, you're going to have who, I mean, you look at it from a size standpoint, right? Like Betty Ako is going to be in there. Um, yeah. You know, guys like that. And Gurley, so, yeah, Clowney. I mean, and, and it, Brandon Miller. It's, it's just a, it's a very long team, and if you watch them play, they just make everything so difficult with that. They will get out on the perimeter, they'll get in passing lanes. They're just not a team. You're not going to see a lot of Alabama type teams anywhere. They're just not a lot of teams that can match their length and athleticism and quickness. Yeah, and, and I think that's where Alabama having the the different options from a size standpoint, you know. Betty Ako, Clowney, Gurley, Miller, 
you know, defensively, I think that gives you some different things you can do against the Drew Timmy. Um, but, but like I said, I, I also think it's a matter of, you know, I, I think you, you also have to understand that I think everyone else there, you see the upside with the rest of that Gonzaga group, even if Timmy's going to get, you know, a lot of the attention, um, this is still a team that can, that can score. And so, yeah, it, it will be interesting to see kind of what, what this looks like from a matchup standpoint, because I, I think Timmy will get his, um, but it's just a matter, I think, of what do you, you know, how do you defend elsewhere? Because, you know, this is a team too. Like, let's not act like Gonzaga either doesn't have some size. I mean, they're they're a team that does have some size as well. And so, um, yeah, it sets up for an interesting matchup. Okay, before we give picks quickly, a word for our new sponsor, Bro Throw. Betting $11 to $10 win, dollar, win 10 stinks. With Bro Throw, you can bet $10 to win $10. You can bet on all 50 states because it's not the house. Betters have a better chance at winning. It's the only sports platform that doesn't take a cut of every bet. No deposit money into a Bro Throw account. No deposits, no minimum bets, no need to connect your bank account. Betters pay each other directly. There's a hassle free sign up process that lets you get in the action in seconds. Go to our community. It is brothrow.com forward slash SE14. We'll be getting that off the ground shortly, but go ahead and get in there and join. Help us out. Anyway, it's a better way to bet on sports, and we are really thrilled about that new partnership here. Okay, Blake. Bart Torvik has got Alabama as a one point favorite. Ken Palm has got Alabama as a two point favorite over under between 156 and 159 between those two places. We don't have lines as we do this Friday morning. What are you thinking on this one? Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it is a an interesting setup here because I think that, you know, Gonzaga is still Gonzaga. And I know this is kind of one of those games that looks pretty difficult and what has already been a really difficult schedule. Um, this is going to be the, what, one, two, three, four, be the fifth game they played against Ken Palm top 15 teams to this point. And they are one in three in those games thus far. They beat Kentucky, lost to Texas, Purdue and Baylor. Um, but the common theme, I think in several of those is what they've, they've been away from home. And yeah. I think this is one that, you know, to me, this is just a different Alabama team than what we've seen in years past. Even if it is a younger group, I feel like they are a lot more resilient. We saw that against Houston. Um, I thought the way they bounced back, they beat a Memphis team that, again, did about what we expected. I mean, we expected Memphis to go in there and really challenge them. We knew Kendrick Davis was going to have a big game, and we knew that Namari Burnett was going to be out, and we wondered defensively what would that look like for Alabama. But they were able to you know, stay focused, go out and win a game like that. And to me, that told me a lot more than maybe just some of the wins they've gotten this season. It's just their ability to stay focused on kind of the task at hand and not just say, oh, we beat the number one team on the road. Now we can kind of sit back a little bit. They seem pretty mature to me for a a group that's playing a lot of younger players. Now, again, the turnovers can worry you a little bit in a game like this uh, because I think Gonzaga, as I said, can score. And so I think you you can't afford to kind of, you know, give up some of those possessions. Uh, but I, I think Alabama's just right now, from what we've seen to this point, I don't know how many people other than maybe Gonzaga fans that would disagree that I just think Alabama is the better team right now. And um, so I, I think I would probably lean towards them in this one uh, because, you know, this is what, this is your typical, I can't imagine this is anything more than a, you know, five point game, something like that. Like it's a, it should be a pretty close game between these two teams, but, but I think I'll lean towards Alabama here because I, I just, I don't know. I love the way they've been playing and it's kind of hard, isn't it? To pick against a team that's, Already beaten two yeah. number one teams, just beat Memphis, has beaten Michigan State. On the road. You know, they've done a lot of good things. And so, um, I, yeah, I think I, I would probably pick Alabama in this spot. Yeah, I'm with you on that. We are picking several more SEC basketball games this weekend or games involving SEC teams. The conference season start is still a week and a half away. We've picked all the bowl games involving SEC teams. Best way to get that, hit that subscribe button. We'll be doing some live streams. In the coming weeks, we'll let you know about those. Again, you can get those by hitting the subscribe button. You'll get the notifications if you enable those. He's Blake Lovell. I'm Chris Lee of Southeastern 14. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.